Ken Curtis was a famous actor and singer during his time. He was best known for his character on Gunsmoke and in popular movies such as Five Steps to Danger, The Young Land, and Bonanza. And his singing career made him even more famous. But everything went down because of a secret compromise. Watch until the end of this video to find out why Ken Curtis surprisingly took his own life after a secret compromise. Ken Curtis was born on July 2nd, 1916 as Curtis Wayne Gates. Curtis spent his first 10 years on a ranch on Muddy Creek in Eastern Bent County, which is in Prowers County in southeastern Colorado. In order for his father, Dan Sullivan Gates, to run for sheriff of Bent County, the family relocated to Los Animas, which is the county seat of Bent County, in the year 1926. His campaign a success, Gates' father was elected sheriff of Bent County and served in that capacity from 1926 to 1931. As the jail took up the entire second floor, his mother, Nellie Sneed Gates, resided in the basement with the rest of the family and provided food for the prisoners. The jail is located for historical preservation purposes on the grounds of the Bent County Courthouse in Los Animas. Ken Curtis attended Bent County High School. In addition to being a member of the band playing the clarinet, Curtis was also the quarterback for the school's football team. He graduated in 1935. During World War II, Curtis served in the United States Army from 1943 to 1945. He attended Colorado Springs University to study medicine, but eventually dropped out. He started gaining interest in the entertainment industry in his early years. His enthusiasm for singing grew in college, and he became active in different musical activities. He left college to get into the entertainment industry. Ken was a singer before moving into acting, and combined both careers once he entered films. Curtis was with the Tommy Dorsey Band in 1941, and succeeded Frank Sinatra as vocalist until Dick Haynes contractually replaced Sinatra in 1942. Curtis may have served simply as insurance against Sinatra's likely defection, and it was Dorsey who suggested that Gates change his name to Ken Curtis. Curtis then joined Shep Fields and his new music, an all reeds band that dispensed with a brass section. Curtis met his first wife, Lorraine Page, at Universal Studios, and they were married in 1943. For much of 1948, Curtis was a featured singer and host of the long-running country music radio program, WWVA Jamboree. Ken joined the Sons of the Pioneers as a lead singer from 1949 to 1952. His big hits with the group included Room Full of Roses and Ghost Riders in the Sky. Columbia Pictures signed Curtis to a contract in 1945. He starred in a series of musical westerns with the Hoosier Hot Shots, playing singing cowboy romantic leads. Through his second marriage, Curtis was a son-in-law of film director John Ford. Curtis teamed with Ford and John Wayne on Rio Grande. He was a singer in the movie's fictional band, The Regimental Singers, which was actually made up of the Sons of the Pioneers. Curtis is not listed as a member of the principal cast. It is possible that he played a bit part, but Curtis is best remembered as Charlie McCrory in The Searchers, starring John Wayne, The Quiet Man, The Wings of Eagles, The Horse Soldiers, The Alamo, and How the West Was Won. Curtis also joined Ford, along with Henry Fonda, James Cagney, William Powell, and Jack Lemmon in the comedy Navy classic Mr. Roberts. He was featured in all three of the only films produced by Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney's C.V. Whitney Pictures. The Searchers, 1956. The Missouri Traveler, 1958, with Brandon DeWilde and Lee Marvin. And The Young Land, 1959, with Patrick Wayne and Dennis Hopper. In Five Steps to Danger, a 1957 film, he is uncredited as FBI agent Jim Anderson. Curtis also produced two extremely low-budget monster films in 1959, The Killer Shrews and The Giant Gila Monster. Also, in the film adaptation Conagher, based on a book by popular writer Louis L'Amour, he starred opposite Sam Elliott as an aging cattleman. 
Curtis guest starred five times on the Western television series Have Gun, Will Travel with Richard Boone. In 1959, he appeared as cowhand Phil Jakes on the Gunsmoke Season 4 episode Jayhawkers. He also guest starred as circus performer Tim Durant on an episode of Perry Mason, The Case of the Clumsy Clown, which originally aired on November 5, 1960. Later, he appeared in Ripcord along with its leading star, Larry Pinnell, a first-run syndicated action-slash-adventure series about a company of the same name providing skydiving services. This series ran from 1961 to 1963, with 76 half-hour episodes in total. Curtis played the role of James, Jim, Buckley, and Pinnell was his young disciple, Theodore Ted McKeever. The television show helped generate interest in the sport of parachuting. In 1964, Curtis appeared as Mule Skinner Graydon in the episode Graydon's Charge of the syndicated Western television series Death Valley Day, also guest starring Denver Pyle and Kathy Lewis. Curtis is still most well known for his part as Festus Hagen on Gunsmoke. In that role, he played an illiterate deputy who was scruffy and grumpy. Over the course of 20 years, Matt Dillon had a total of five deputies, but Festus played the role the longest for 304 episodes. Festus was based on a man from Curtis's Los Animas childhood named Frederick Munden, who went by the name Cedar Jack. Cedar Jack lived 15 miles south of town. He cut cedar fence posts for a living. Curtis saw Jack come to Los Animas many times where he often got drunk and ended up in his father's jail. Festus's character was known in part for the nasal, twangy, rural accent that Curtis made up for the role, but which did not sound like Curtis's real voice. Celebrities on television often go above and beyond, often making public appearances to promote their shows. When Gunsmoke was not running, Curtis would act in Western-themed stage shows at fairs, rodeos, and other venues around the country. He continued to do so for several years after the show was canceled. Additionally, Curtis worked as a campaigner for Ronald Reagan in 1976, when the future president was vying for the Republican nomination against the sitting president, Gerald Ford. Curtis supported Reagan. In two episodes of Gunsmoke, Carol O'Connor played a guest role. In later years, Curtis appeared as a guest star on O'Connor's NBC program, In the Heat of the Night playing the role of a retired police detective. In Disney's 1973 animated feature, Robin Hood, he did the voice of Nutsy the Vulture. A decade later, he made his comeback to television in the short-lived Western series, The Yellow Rose, in which he co-starred with Noah Beery Jr. In 1981, Curtis was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Curtis's last acting role was as the aging cattle rancher Seaborn Tay in the television production Conagher in 1991 by Western author Louis L'Amour. Sam Elliott starred in the lead role, and Curtis's Gunsmoke co-star Buck Taylor played Newly O'Brien, a bad man. Buck Taylor's father, Dub Taylor, had a minor role. Curtis remains best known for his role as Festus Hagen the scruffy, cantankerous, and illiterate deputy in Gunsmoke. He joined the Gunsmoke cast in 1967, superseding the previous deputy, Thaddeus Thad Greenwood, played by Roger Ewing. Curtis married Tori Connolly in 1966. People used to say that Tori, quote, never met a stranger because she made friends with people so quickly. Even if you were only her friend for a short time, you were lucky because of how loyal, funny, generous, and confident she was with other people. She was the proud wife of her beloved Ken Festus Curtis for almost 30 years. Before that, she was the heart and soul of the professional rodeo cowboys community for 20 years. Ken and Tori were married until his death in 1991. A statue of Ken Curtis as Festus can be found at 430 Pulaski Avenue in Clovis, California, in Fresno County in front of the Educational Employees Credit Union. Curtis lived in Clovis in his later years. With his third wife, Ken Curtis was forced to make a difficult compromise. 
Because of the stress of his job, Curtis became habitually exposed to tobacco and began using it as a kind of self-medicating drug to alleviate his anxiety and tension. When not cared for, the body deteriorates rapidly and dramatically and makes pre-existing heart disease worse. In the five years that he was married to his third wife, Tori Ahern Connolly, he developed a new perspective on health but was unable to alter his destiny. Ken Curtis's wife reportedly said that during their life together, in the beginning of 1967, she discovered his unidentified cancer. Because this disease caused Ken Curtis so much anguish, he was unable to have children. Ken Curtis admitted that he was unable to conceal the truth. Thus, he let fate decide his destiny. While in the process of adopting two children, he struck a long-term compromise with his condition by continuing to smoke cigarettes into the latter years of his life. At the height of his struggles with arterial sclerosis, he suffered a fatal heart attack. His third wife revealed that Ken Curtis took care of all of their financial matters. This helps explain why he had been exhausted for so long after trying to be strong. She confessed that Ken was suffering from depression during the final two months of his life. Depression is a serious mental illness that can interfere with a person's life. It can cause long-lasting and severe feelings of sadness and hopelessness, as well as a loss of interest in activities. That's unfortunately what happened during Ken's last months. Those who live with depression cannot simply decide to stop feeling depressed. Ken Curtis concealed his smoking habit by avoiding locations with a lot of people and making an effort to curb his urges as much as he could in order to reduce his level of anxiety around other people. But anxiety never stays at one level. It oscillates up and down, often influenced by what you're thinking about. Curtis passed away in Fresno, California on April 28, 1991 from a heart attack while sleeping. His cremated remains were dispersed over the Colorado flatlands. Ken Curtis was considered a legend. He was a big name in the entertainment industry back then, be it acting or music. He did it with style and grace. From singing to acting, Ken Curtis was an entertainer in every sense of the word. He had a winning personality that attracted millions of fans across the globe. His films and music received critical acclaim making him one of the most sought-after performers of his time. That's it for today. See you in the next video.